Hello everyone, uh, I'm back making another video, uh, another Ubuntu server setup video. I've gotten a fairly good response from one of my other videos that I posted, uh, Ubuntu server setup. Uh, I think it was the first video that I had posted. So, uh, things I got a fairly good response to that and others asking me to uh, make more videos uh, on setting up a Ubuntu server and a Linux server machine. Uh, I decided to go ahead and set up a or create another tutorial. Um, as you notice, my office has changed a little bit. It's a little different than uh, what it was before. Uh, we've actually moved, so we're into a different place now. Uh, so my office is different now. Um, but uh, I, I like it. It's a pretty decent, pretty decent place. So uh, and it works. So I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and kind of get started on this. Uh, in the previous tutorials I showed you how to actually install Ubuntu server. Uh, showed you what what kind of machine that you might want to use. Uh, whether it be just some PC that you got laying around the house, an extra one that you're not not using, just collecting dust, or whether you go out and spend the money and actually uh, build you an actual server machine. Uh, either way, you know, it, it works. Uh, either from, you know, you, you got just a low-end machine or a high-end machine. Uh, Ubuntu pretty well uh, caters to to whatever you whatever you have. Uh, granted, if you have a higher end, uh, a regular server machine, Ubuntu is going to you know Ubuntu the server edition is going to utilize that a lot more than you know your basic home computer. But nonetheless, if it's just for you know your basic at home use or just a, a basic web server that you got running at the house. Uh, to kind of cut your cost on web hosting and uh, something that you can develop on or even even for a production standpoint if you wanted to have a production server set up um, that's okay too. Uh, the only thing is you, if you're going to use it in production use I recommend you know taking some precautions on security and really researching that and making sure things are secure with your home network and that way uh, you know your other machines on the network Aren't, aren't hacked and uh, you know you're not setting yourself up setting yourself up for vulnerability uh, allowing any of your personal information to be accessed uh, from somebody else from a third party uh, Ubuntu server out of the box is pretty secure um, I haven't had much issues with it I've had some attempts on uh, people trying to hack my server uh, they were failed attempts uh, I'm sure there's people out there that are probably good enough they, they probably could find a hole in, in my system and and break in. Uh, hopefully nobody does. Uh, there's nothing real crucial or important on there. Uh, just basic web server stuff and of course I always keep everything backed up on another machine so in case something should go wrong uh, I always have it backed up and I recommend you do the same thing. And once we get further into the tutorial I'll show you how to do things like that. Uh, uh, we'll be logging in with a SSH server um, setting up and installing webmin. If, if you don't want to use webmin then if you want to use something else, if you have a, a cPanel uh, option to use cPanel, you can use that. Uh, I won't be covering any of that because I, I, I've used cPanel, but as far as uh, on a home server, I'm not sure what the process is uh, to setting that all up. Webmin is a free service that's offered, uh, completely free, don't cost you a dime. Uh, just like everything I'll be showing you in all my tutorials, you know, it's, it's pretty much free, uh, or is free. I, I try to avoid having to spend any kind of money on anything uh, when it comes to uh, my web development and servers uh, other than the cost of the machine itself of course but even then I try to get away for free if I can but uh, <laughs> as far as um, as far as the software goes um, I, I believe in open source and, and free software um, I, I like it I like the community I like the people um, seems to be a lot of great support out there if, if you're in trouble uh, you get people like me who make videos and also develop, write code, and are willing to help others out if, if they get in a jam on something and are not too, you know, not sure. And if, even if we're not sure, we we usually have an idea to point you in the right direction to get help on getting those things taken care of, whatever it may be. Um, so I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and <coughs> get started. Um, we're gonna log into the server with Putty. Uh, if you, those of you who haven't heard of it, um, Putty is a free program. Uh, it's a 
it's a client for logging in to a server machine via SSH. Um, you can download it at putty.org. I'll leave the link uh, beneath the, the video. Um, also, something else we'll get into, like I said before, is Webmin. And there's a great tutorial out there at secretengineer.com. Um, the post number uh, for it is uh, it'll be question P equals 788, and I'll leave the link for that in uh, underneath the video also, so you'll have a link to both of those. And the reason why I'm going to point you to that tutorial on installing Webmin is is because it's a great tutorial, and anytime uh, I forget and I need to reference back, like oh shoot, how do I install Webmin again? Uh, you know, because it's not something I do all the time. Um, you know, I usually set up set up my machine and and it's good to go. Um, uh, I usually reference to that. I usually reference to that tutorial because it's a great tutorial and it's got links to Webmin's site, I believe, on their site. If not, webmin.com. Uh, you can just Google Webmin, uh, and they got a lot of help on Webmin's actual website, uh, documentation, and everything for different for different Linux versions uh, and what you need to do to install it. Uh, as of recently, Webmin has updated their software. So part of the tutorial on on Secret Engineer's uh, website um, may be a little false. You may not have to follow through with it. And what I'm talking about, uh, just to kind of briefly cover it now, is the part where uh, once you've installed Webmin, uh, it will it will prompt you uh, for your username and password. Um, if you try to use the username and password that you've set up during your Ubuntu install, uh, it won't allow you to log in. It won't use that uh, system's username and password. Uh, Webmin requires a separate uh, username and password, but it seems like that was a, a bug on Webmin's behalf, and it seems that they've taken care of it, because the last few times that I've installed Webmin, uh, I haven't needed to, to follow through with that part of the tutorial. Um, I've actually just been able to log in with the system's username and password and it's allowed me to log into Webmin just fine without creating an actual Webmin user. Um, but like I said, if, if you run into that issue where you're unable to log in with the username and password that you set up during the Ubuntu install, this here shows you, this tutorial shows you exactly what you need to do in order to get that working. Um, and it seems to be about the only good tutorial out there that actually shows you exactly step by step what you have to do. And it's very easy to walk through and, and go through the tutorial and, and set it up and get it working. So I hope that suffice for you. And if you have any questions or comments on it, you know, feel free to ask. So I guess without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started by logging into our server. My server's already set up, so um, but I'll just show you how what you got to do to to log into the server using Putty. Um, the other thing. Uh, you might want to make sure you do before you try logging in is making sure that the settings in your router are correct that you're allowing uh, port 22 which is the default SSH server port that that's forwarded to your server machine um, and that that's allowed uh, on your home network if not you'll probably run into issues uh, so remember port 22 that's the port you need to open and, and forward in your router to the IP address that's associated with your server machine um, once you've gotten that taken care of, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, if you follow through with the, the rest of the tutorial, once you have your router configured correctly, and you have port 80, port 22 uh, forwarded to your server machine, you should be able to just type in the IP address of your server machine, and Apache should show you a default um, uh, web, website or web page. Uh, if not, if it doesn't uh, resolve anything or has trouble connecting, then you know that you probably have some issues with your router configuration. Um, later on eventually we'll get into setting up your host file if you're accessing your server from a Windows machine or even a Linux machine. Linux machines don't seem to have much of an issue figuring out uh, resolving uh, domain names to IP addresses as Windows does. Windows tends to try to go to the outside world and look rather than looking first within your home network. Uh, that's where your host file comes in we can set up your host file to redirect URLs to specific IP addresses within your home network. Uh, and we'll get into all that further in the tutorials. Uh, for now, like I said, we'll go ahead and log in with uh, Putty. We'll get Putty uh, opened up. Uh, if you haven't downloaded Putty yet, I'd recommend going ahead and 
downloading it as you'll need it to follow through with the rest of this tutorial. Uh, you can just search for putty uh, and it should probably be one of the first uh, ones that pop up. It's actually the third listing on Google. Uh, download Putty, a free SSH and Telenet client for Windows, all putty.org. Uh, and it would be this first one here. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see all this. Uh, I'm going to move the camera here so we can, you can all see exactly what's going on. I need a screen capture utility really. Um, there's a few out there, but uh, hopefully this will suffice for now. Um, here's a secret engineer's website. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. It it will pop up a box during your webmin. Um, so you can go here to follow along with this tutorial if you want for installing setting up webmin. Um, as far as the putty goes, like I said, it will be your, it should be like third listing down, download putty, a free SSH and uh, Telenet client for Windows. Um, they also have a version available for Linux too. Um, it says here, here are the putty files themselves. Um, the putty, the first download link, putty exe, this one there. Um, uh, that's the one that you're going to want. You just want to click that and then save that file. There is no actual install process with it. Once you've saved it, uh, you basically will go to wherever you saved it to and open it. Um, once you've done so, you'll be able to go ahead and run that program. And once that program is open, uh, this is basically what you're going to be looking at. Uh, as you can see, you'll basically have uh, putty configuration. Uh, you'll have basic options for putty session. On the left hand side you'll see some different options available. Uh, we won't need to worry about any of those. Uh, host name or IP address. This here is where you're going to type in the IP address of your server machine. And here is the port number for your SSH server. Um, like I said before, port 22, that's the default port for it. So you'll need to make sure that that's forwarded in your router. Um, once you've once you've got that all set up, your router and everything, and port forwarding and everything set up, uh, you shouldn't have any problems logging in. Uh, you can save sessions down here, so you'll be able to just type in the name of a session, you know, type in your IP address up here, uh, port number, uh, and then the name of the session, and then click save. Uh, this way you won't have to always type in the IP address uh, of your server if you have multiple servers. Um, you can once you've saved it, and I've done so, I've I've saved. I got several different servers, so um, I've saved a session. Uh, you can just select open, or if you don't have one saved, you can type in the IP address of the server machine, and the port number, and select open. Either way will work fine. Um, once you've opened it, uh, you'll be asked to enter your username and password. Uh, once you've entered your username and password, you should be able to just go ahead and log in. This is the box that pops up. Um, you'll go ahead and log into your server machine. Uh, and it's just like if you've ever used the DOS command line or anything, um, 
you'll be fairly familiar with uh, what you're presented with here. It is basically the same thing, or or the Linux command line, of course, uh, and, and which is what this is. You're you're at the command line on your server machine at this point. Once you've entered your login information and uh, password, your username and password, uh, it will prompt you with a a login, and then it will ask you for your password for that server machine, uh, and then you'll enter your password. Once you've entered those correctly, you'll you'll be presented with a a little graph with showing what's going on with your system here. Um, it says system information as of Tuesday, October 2nd. Uh, system load, usage, uh, uh, memory usage, swap usage processes, uh, users logged in, IP address uh, for the device, for the server machine's uh, network card. It will show you what the what the IP address is of that. Uh, by default, you'll be logged into your home directory. If you just type ls -l uh, and press enter, it'll give you a long listing of everything that's in that directory. Meaning, you'll have your read, write, and execute bits over here on the on the side, uh, and then who it's owned by and what group it's associated with. Uh, if you're not sure on how Linux does its uh, file permissions, uh, you might want to you know do some research on that to kind of see how that all works uh, and then over here um, you have the the size of the, the folder uh, directory or file uh, the date uh, last modified and then the, the name of the directory or file um, these are all folders and files that are listed within the users home directory uh, if we go back out to root uh, and you can do this by oh. by typing cd forward slash I got confused there for a second I thought I was, thought I was on a Windows uh, system using a Mac slash CD forward slash CD space forward slash will take you to the root if you're a root user if you're not then you won't be able to do that um, and again you'll if you type CD forward slash uh, CD space forward slash it should take you to the root of the system uh, the root directory uh, kinda like in Windows where you have um, you know right here if you're on the C drive you'll notice you have you know, uh, log, program files, program files x86, users, WAMP, uh, and Windows directory. Same thing with Linux. Uh, you're looking at the root of the file system. Uh, Linux does things a little different when it comes to depending on what drives and stuff you have set up and, and how, how, how that all works. Um, so if you're unsure, uh, you know, there's something else you're going to want to probably research on on how all that works because it's a little different than Windows um, you could have multiple drives but it's still going to give you a listing of all these files and directories uh, in the in the root system uh, the way it sets up a drive a drive may be listed uh, you know under under one of these other directories depending on where you put it typically like mount uh, the directory mount will will contain uh, mounted hardware uh, it says it's like CD-ROM drives other either external hard drives or internal hard drives uh, thumb drives things of that nature will be will be listed in the mount directory unless you specify or set it up to be listed somewhere else uh, once you've logged in now that we're logged into the system and I've kind of given you a little brief once over on uh, the kind of the file system and everything we'll we can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and install your webmin uh, like I said, I I prefer to point you to this tutorial here, um, the one I was speaking of earlier on Secret Engineers website. And like I said, I'll I'll list uh, uh, Webmin's actually been updated. <coughs> it's no longer 1.570. The newest version is, uh, and, and this here says Ubuntu Server 11.04. Um, 
and if you follow along and install the 1204 edition or even a newer edition this tutorial should still work just fine as I've used it uh, and haven't had any problems with it it's all pretty much the same same difference um, you'll basically type in um, and you'll go through this tutorial and it will have you use some uh, super user uh, commands the SUDO uh, command uh, once you use that uh, you'll type you know SUDO space you know and then whatever you whatever you're wanting to do it's going to prompt you for the first time you do that it's going to prompt you for a password and the password you're going to want to use is uh, the password you use to log in with uh, as long as you're a, a, a super user um, you'll you'll need to use that password um, so that's pretty much it for logging in with Putty. Uh, once you've logged in and you've set up Webmin, um, come back and check out my other video. I'll uh, be making another video on uh, how to configure Webmin once it's installed. Uh, once you got Webmin installed, you should be able to. It, it, it pretty well tells you during the install, uh, you know what you need to do. Uh, the default port for Webmin will be whatever the IP address is of your server machine and uh, it'll be set by default port 10,000 so you'll basically just type in uh, your IP address uh, of whatever your server machine is um, say it's 192.168.0.2 uh, you'll type in the port as follows with a colon and then 10,000. That's the default port for Webmin. So that's basically what you'll type in, and it will probably tell you that uh, it's on a uh, SSL connection, uh, and you'll need to accept the certificate in order to log in. Uh, basically, sites like Facebook and MySpace and some others, they use. Uh, I'm not so sure about MySpace. I'm, I'm pretty sure it does, but Facebook, for one, uh, they use SSL, meaning they have a certificate. Uh, once you've logged in via SSL, uh, it, it gives you a certificate and they have a certificate on their server machine that, that verifies the connection. It's an encrypted connection and this way both the client and the server machine um, know that they're communicating with one another and it prevents uh, or helps prevent against third party eavesdropping. Um, you know, because you know, between your machine and their machine Obviously, you know, there's a lot of different connections that are being made there uh, and that helps secure the connection and, and make sure that anything that's passed through the URL is secured and encrypted and that it actually re is received by uh, uh, the server machine. Uh, so with your own home network, you know, you really don't have much of an issue. You probably or shouldn't have much of an issue with that, uh, but you'll still need to log in with uh, on an SSL connection and it's like this HTTPS uh, whenever you see the S it means secure uh, so you'll type in an address like that that will be the correct correct address um, of course you know this IP uh, address may change you know depending on what your IP address is and how your home network is set up um, you'll set that up uh, to redirect you uh, or excuse me uh, thinking of something else I was thinking of the showing you the host file real quick before I end this tutorial um, you'll use HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then whatever the IP address is of your server machine colon 10,000 that should be the default port for your webmin after you've got webmin set up uh, so I've showed you how to log into your server with putty um, also uh, just so you know kind of what webmin looks like this is kind of what webmin is um, on the side you'll have you know different different features over here uh, webmin system server uh, other networking hardware cluster unused modules um, once you've got set up with webmin you'll be able to do quite a bit on your server uh, if you're more of a point, point and click type person you don't want to use the command line uh, a lot uh, also for setting up Apache it, it makes it a breeze um, and basically this is kinda 
you know the system it you know system information here you can see uh, it shows you you know pretty much everything uh, yes I have six gigs of installed memory and six gigs of virtual memory which is probably a little overkill uh, not a lot of disk space only about 300 gigs of disk space um, uptime is only two days for right now but here's what I was talking about with your host file and I'll cover this briefly before I end this tutorial uh, what you'll need to do is go to your notepad uh, find notepad go to start uh, all programs uh, accessories and then on the notepad you'll need to right click on it and select select the run as administrator and of course you'll select yes to run as administrator and once you've opened it you'll need to go to file open and you'll need to go to this location here computer local disk C Windows system 32 drivers ETC uh, and that will be the location of your host file C colon backslash Windows system 32 drivers ETC uh, you'll need to go down to the uh, text document select the file type and select all files and this will give you a listing of all files that are in there you'll select the host file once you select that it should open up and you should see a file kind of like this here copyright 93 to 2009 Microsoft Corporation blah blah blah, blah. Uh, it'll kind of give you a, an example of how to how to set up your host file depending on whatever your IP address is uh, of your server machine you can type in the IP address of your server machine and then put a space and then whatever whatever URL you want to use um, we can use blank dot com uh, now blank dot com and you just control s or file save to save that now that I've saved that and I go here to Firefox and as you can see uh, in the URL bar I can type in blank dot com hopefully this works the first time bam it takes me to my server machine now blank.com is pointed to my server machine uh, so that's pretty much it um, <clears throat> depending on what you have set up <clears throat> for your uh, uh, you know in your Apache and everything and we'll get into that more later but that's pretty much it for setting up your host file logging in with webmin and uh, logging in with webmin or excuse me setting up your host file uh, putty logging in with putty and uh, getting getting logged on to your server uh, so hopefully I covered everything okay if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them uh, I hope this helps um, and by always uh, uh, Feel free to visit my website, snowballrandom.com. Uh, I got some great tutorials on if you're a PHP developer and uh, looking for some, or if you're a beginner and looking to get into it and figure out how to uh, uh, look for some good source code. Feel free to check it out, snowballrandom.com. I'll leave a link for all, all of this in, in, underneath the video. And again, thanks and have a good one.